Oh, hi. This week, we're gonna add a layer to this dress because I fucking love how it fits and how it looks as far as the top, but it's real short. I can wear it with shorts as shown here, but like, don't want to do that with a dress. So, dear comrades, we're gonna add some really fun nerdy zhuzh to this. I have owned this exploding TARDIS Van Gogh Starry Night fabric for years. I'm going to add this to this and make it longer and it's gonna be great. And especially because it has been so, so long since I have filmed a video in the shop and made a thing just for me, I'm actually gonna drink a beer. I think I feel like drinking beer. I haven't really felt like drinking lately. And that happens sometimes. There's been a lot of shit going on in my life. This bottle is weird because it had the foil on it. It also has a pop tab, so we gotta get that baby off. And then there's also a cork. Why so many? Do people thieve this in bottle shops? Because this seems a little excessive. Let's hope I don't stab myself. Oh, I'm so scared. Come on. Oh, it's like a real cork too. Or I guess it's good because the fake corks shred sometimes. Oh. Can you see how red I got? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mmm. Oh, this smells really good. It does actually smell kind of whiny. I didn't do the here's what you need when the thing. I didn't know when it was going to pop. So here's what you need. <gasps> it tastes like candy, but not in like a sickeningly sweet way. If you're not like into beer, try something like this, like a lambic or a sour, is my recommendation to you. It's like a little sticky on the mouthfeel. That's a horrible sentence to say. Okay, so I never remember to turn this light on. Ah, more light. I get to teach you how to do a thing that I didn't used to know how to do, and that's how to make gathers, because this dress is kind of in three sections. The very top of the bodice and the boobs end here and then it's like this weird, I don't know what to call this, and there's this smocking on the back but just for this center band. Yeah, can you see how it's gathered? It's not all flat across and if you look at the stitching on the inside you can see it's not just from the elastic like it's actually gathered where it's sewn. But I'm gonna show you how to do that and it's super easy I promise. But first I'm gonna seam rip the shit out of this and take off this entire bottom layer. I'll tell you what the next step is once this one's done. That's how tutorials work. Are these really tutorials or is it just me drunkenly figuring out how to make a thing and just forcing you to watch me do it? Six and one half dozen and the other? Oh, and just to specify, I'm just seam ripping this bottom layer off. I would consider just cutting this off, but I do want to save it as a lining, so I want to keep as much fabric there as possible, so keep that kind of stuff in mind as well. Also, even though I super doubt that any of you have this exact dress, but there's a zipper all the way down the front, but I am seam ripping the skirt portion from the zipper also. It's gonna be fine. We're not installing the full zipper. We're just treating this like any other fabric edge. It's gonna, it's gonna be cool. Don't freak out. It's just a zipper. Ooh, okay. In case you don't know the difference between regular flat fabric and then gathered, this is what that looks like. It's just a bizarrely constructed dress. A well-constructed dress, because that took forever to take off. Interesting. I'm learning so much. This is the fun part about reconstructing things, is you figure out how they made the thing, and it's not always how you think they made it. Well, hey, welcome to my costume shop. This is where I work. I don't know why that accent started happening. I have ironed out the bottom skirt portion. Probably hear the iron in the background. And folded it in half. And then I also pressed out the fabric I'm gonna use. And it's not long enough for what I need width-wise. So I'm folding it over this way, if that's making any sense. I just need it to overlap enough that this can fit across this way. Weights are helpful, literal. Weights. Okay, so I'm not gonna cut this out exactly because I want this to be a little longer. This is still gathered up here, so it's gonna be a little shorter on the top than it is on the bottom anyway, but it's still, even with that, it tapers a little bit out. So I need to keep that in mind as I make this longer, it needs to come out a little bit more of an angle. So I'm gonna add like this much to the bottom and also allotting for like a little tiny quarter inch, half inch hem on the bottom. That should be good, I think. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. This is not a really extreme angle and this is kind of the angle I'm gonna copy over here. So I'm gonna go this way. I mean, it'll be fine. 
Okay, so I'm pretty much ready to cut. So it's gonna kind of swing out. I think this will be fine. Maybe I'll bring you over here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm basically just tracing this guy. I, I have my bottom skirt folded in half. I did leave the gathering stitches up here just cause I didn't want to have to redo that for no reason, but I'm copying the angle of this seam over here. That's why I have this ruler laid out. I don't know if that's making any sense. Also, because I'm gathering these two layers separately, they don't need the exact same amount of gathering. The lining can be less gathered than this. So if you want to cut some extra fabric to give us some extra zhuzh, you go right ahead. I'm just eyeballing this. It's not the end of the world if it's not perfect. Again, I'm following the angle of the ruler, not this curve of the skirt, because this would be out further if the gathers weren't there. I hope that part is making sense. I am overcomplicating things that do not need to be overcomplicated. Well, I hope that worked okay. So before I do anything else, I'm gonna serge these edges. Okie doke. Now the one other thing I need to do before I actually gather things find the smaller top edge and I'm just gonna mark the center of it and just line that pin up with the center seam. Now all I'm doing here is marking where the gathering stitches need to start because this still needs to be the same length even if I put more gathers here because the bodice of the skirt is still the same size no matter what we're doing with the skirt part. So I'm just gonna put a pin right where the first gathering stitch starts. Is this making any goddamn sense? Also fabric wall. I'm like a kid in a candy store here. Ooh, you can also measure how far it is from where the gathering stitches start to the end. Gather the edges of the outer fabric to the same amount. I'm not wording this very well, but I promise it's not as complicated as I'm making it sound. I'm just gonna measure how long this section is. Six inches. This is obviously more than six inches. When I gather it, I'm gonna just smush it all up until this is six inches wide. Is that worded better? I don't know. Why you watch me? This is my work wife. I love her very much. It doesn't have a name because it's not actually my machine, but holy shit. It's hard to sew on my machine at home after using this fucking thing. You can raise and lift the presser foot with your foot. You can obviously sew with that. And then if you want to end a stitch, you just push harder and it cuts the thread and also lifts everything up. BTW, pre-wound bobbins are a thing. Let's do some gathering stitches. Just so I can grab the threads because you want some extra starting thread with the bobbin and the top thread. I'm gonna pull that out. Then you're gonna start between a quarter and a half inch. You want your final stitches, like when you actually attach this to the garment, to run along the half inch mark. So you need your two sets of gathering stitches to be on either side of that. So one's gonna be pretty close to a quarter inch and the other one's gonna be a little over half an inch on the other side so that your final stitches go between. Let's stitch. So you're not gonna do any back tacking. You're just gonna do one long row pretty much to the end. And then don't cut those threads because you want more excess. And then you can cut them. And then you do your second row of stitching right next to those, a little over. So now it's kind of between half inch and three quarters of an inch. I don't know how well you can see this, but now there's two rows of really long stitches. I'm gonna do the same on the other edge. Right now, this distance of gathering stitches is 10 inches, where I need to make it be six inches. The bobbin thread we use is a little bit heavier duty than the top thread. Because of that, I'm gonna grab the bobbin threads pretty much always, but it just, whatever starts to pull easier and make sure you're grabbing both the top and bottom thread. No, that's not the way to phrase it. How to phrase this best. So whether you're pulling from the top or from the bottom, just make sure you're grabbing both sets of threads of either the top or bottom at the same time. Cause you don't want like the bottom section to be more gathered than the top or vice versa. So you're just gonna pull both at the same time. Try to evenly distribute the gathers. Because stuff isn't back tacked, make sure you're not pulling so much that the thread on the other end is like coming out. Cause that has happened to me before and it's a real pain in the ass cause you basically have to start over with the gathering stitches. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Oh, that's why I left that pin in there. I'm gonna mark the center of this again, just to make sure everything's lining up the way I want it to. I'm gonna just pin it right to this guy. Now here's the thing. This needs to face right sides out, and then this is also gonna face right sides out. So they're gonna face the same direction. This is the right side, this is the right side. You're gonna have them stand in line, basically. So these should now be same length at the top. 
same width at the top, I guess. And then this is tricky because this is all elastic. Okay, and then I'm also going to stretch out this smocked section and mark the center here, just so everything's as even as fucking possible. Hold on, I need a snack break. I'm eating an everything bagel sandwich, um, so there's probably a bunch of shit in my teeth. Okay, so I'm gonna have my fashion fabric on top with my lining under it. Right side's facing me. I'm gonna lay the right side of the bodice facing away from me. I'm gonna pin this in the center and just because of this elastic smocking in the middle and I wanna make sure everything stays even, I'm gonna start from the center and go out and then start from the center on the other side and go out just so I don't accidentally end up with like a bunch of extra shit at the end. I don't know, I'm just trying to be as careful as possible because I really like this dress and I really like this fabric and I would like to not Fuck it up. I'm also gonna set this to a smaller stitch length and we're gonna sew all these layers together. I'm gonna do a half inch seam allowance, which should guide these stitches right between the gathering stitches I did when I get to the gathered parts. But, because this has the smocking, I need to stretch that as I'm going. Another advantage of doing it this way by starting in the middle and coming out is if you need to tweak your gathers as you get to the edge, that's totally an option. Just remember to leave a little bit at the end to fold over so you can attach it to the zipper. Ooh, see? And everything's ending here, the zipper. Cool, cool, cool. And now I'm just gonna do the same shit on the other side. Ooh, do make sure you're back tacking at the ends of these stitches just so stuff doesn't fall apart that way. Now the top and bottom are attached. Does it look okay? I didn't catch anything. Eee! Oh my God, I love how it looks so far. Okay, now, as long as everything looks good, find the gathering stitches you did, and you can pull these one at a time now, they'll come out much easier. Now, I'm going to hem the bottom of this. I'm just gonna fold over this bottom surged edge. It is like the very, very bottom of the skirt. Fold that over twice, just so it looks extra good. Ooh, looks so beautiful, so professional. Okay, now we just need to reattach the zipper. Again, this is such a unique dress. I doubt any of you are gonna have the same issues I am having, but I hope this has been somewhat helpful. <laughs> to attach a zipper the easy way, I'm just going to sew it right sides together first, about half an inch in. I'm not even gonna swap out to a different foot. It's gonna be fine. Though, yes, most machines come with a zipper foot. So that's attached right sides together. And now, same thing on the other side. Make sure everything's lined up. All right, this is how it looks from the back. So obviously, because the outer fabric is longer than the rest of the stuff, it's gonna hang down a little lower, but that's fine. I'm okay with how this is gonna end up looking. It's more the butt not being longer than I was worried about. This little like slip in the front is gonna be fine. So now I just need to top stitch all of this down and then we'll be done. I'm gonna unzip this just to make everything a little easier. Yeah, so top stitching, I mean, it's just going along the zipper. This is a pretty wide zipper, so it's not an issue as far as like having a separate foot or anything. I'm just sewing it as if it were like any other kind of fabric. If you can even see what the fuck is happening here. There's the bottom of the zipper right here. I'm just gonna continue down with this folded over. So basically giving it a hem. And then repeat on the other side. Oh my God, that was the last step. Other than trying it on. Eee, I'm so excited, I hope it fits. Oh my God, you guys, look, it fits. I still, I'm so far away from the camera and I still can't fucking fit in frame. I zoom you forever out. This is gonna be like my new favorite thing to wear. Holy shit. That was like kind of complicated, a little tricky to figure out. I learned a couple things and it went well. Eee, I'm so happy. I need to pack up before my actual shift starts. So I'm gonna sort everything out and clean up. I'm so excited. I really hope I explained things okay or like showed you in a sensical way. I'm sorry if I'm not, I'm really bad at explaining things. Why I do tutorials on the internet, I don't know. But thank you guys for sticking around. I will see you with something else soon. If you're watching this and you haven't seen my baked bean video, please go leave a comment telling me your experience with baked beans because this has become even more fascinating than I already thought when I made the baked bean video. <laughs> what are you? And I, ow, fuck, there was a pin in the middle.